Hello once again. This is the Mushroom Wizard and I have brought to you today a presentation about the Deceiver Mushrooms of Saskatchewan. And this is uh, a group of mushrooms that many of you may never have even heard of. They only include one genus and that is Lasaria. So what is a deceiver? Well, as I just mentioned, those are mushrooms in the Lasaria genus. They are very colorful. And though it is easy to distinguish the Lasaria genus from other genera, it is very difficult to distinguish individual species within that genus from the species Lasaria lacata. And you'll see what I mean as we come to the end of this presentation. These are very colorful species, like I said, and they are often ignored by mushroom pickers, despite being very common. So the first species we're going to look at is the scurfy deceiver, Lasaria proxima. And as with the other ones, this is quite a beautiful mushroom. It is red to orange to brown, convex, flattening out with age, um, sometimes developing a bit of a central depression there. You can see there's a little bit of one going on. The margin is downturned, sometimes becoming upturned. Uh, and as it becomes upturned, sometimes it is wavy. And when it is downturned, you can see there it almost has a minutely pleated look to it, almost like they're folded, but that quickly disappears as the mushroom ages. Uh, it has a rough surface to the cap, so it is finely scaled, and those scales become more pronounced with age. And it is hygrophonous, so developing a two-toned appearance in dry weather. If you remember, hygrophonous means uh, water-loving, and basically the mushroom will have a completely different color in dry weather than it does in uh, wetter weather. And as the mushroom dries out, those colors will merge together and you'll often see it drying from the center outwards and it will have two separate colors as a result. And these grow up to about three inches in diameter. So not a bad sized mushroom for the table. And we can see a size reference here with the pine cone. Had to catch myself from saying acorn. All the tree lovers out there would slap me, I'm sure. Uh, that may not even be a pine cone, I don't really know. Moving on. So the gills are salmon to pink to peach. They are adnate to decurrent. They are very distant, as you can see. The gills themselves, and this is common to this genus, they are very thick. You can see they, they look much more thick than other species would. And short gills are frequent. So between those gills, you can see two to three short gills in this species here. They have a white spore print, as do all the Lasaria species. You can see those spores uh, kind of around the apex there, a bit of a spore deposit. Here's a spore print for you, that's what it should look like. So the stipe is colored the same as the cap, with the base slightly darker. You can see it darkening towards the base there. Uh, it's cylindrical to bulbous. And there is a central attachment to the cap going on. It is smooth to fibrillous and hairy. And when I say fibrillous, remember that's something I often use for the cap. And that is, it has like very fine, thin scales that feel almost like hairs. And it is tough and fibrous. You can see those longitudinal grooves there. Um, you can bend it. Uh, often these will snap very easily, but uh, you don't really wanna cook the stipe and eat it. It's not gonna be very good. And it's stock-like and uh, flexible to a point. Like I said, eventually it will will snap. And a, and a good part of that is because the stipe is so long as well. It's up to six inches high. 
These are mycorrhizal with pine trees. So that gives a good portion of the province. These will grow with, uh, with jack pine. And if you're down in that very special spot in the southwest portion of the province, you could be seeing these with lodgepole pine as well. These are terrestrial, solitary to gregarious, and found from the summer through to fall. And very pretty mushrooms. The edibility is choice. You have a mild taste. Uh, you can see that hollow stipe there with one that's been cut in half and you can see some variability in the color here as well and uh, you can see that one up at the top there has gotten quite wavy and these are for intermediate mushroom pickers because again they are guild mushrooms and I consider all guild mushrooms at least intermediate this beautiful specimen is the amethyst deceiver Lasaria amethystina So this is a dark violet to grayish purple cap. The grayish purple isn't nearly as beautiful and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, they are convex, flattening out with age, sometimes developing a central depression as you can see happening in this photo. The margin is downturned, becoming upturned and then wavy with age. Uh, when you run your finger across the cap, it won't be scaly like the last one. It'll actually be velvety and very soft to the touch. And once again, it is hygrophonous and will take on two separate color tones as it dries out. And these are a bit smaller than the last one. They're up to two inches in diameter. And there on the left, you can see that violet gray or silver almost uh, cap. And on the right, you can see uh, a darker violet, but it's got uh, that hygrophonous attribute occurring. So it's actually drying out from the center and the center will be dry and taking on the colors that it would have when it's dry, whereas the margin is still moist and, and not changed as of yet. And here's a size reference for you, though the person who took the photo put their name over top of the measurement. The gills are lavender to purple and just as beautiful as the top of the cap. They are adnate to decurrent. They are distant, as you can see there. They are very thick, and those short gills are three to four each between the uh, between the gills. So we would say that short gills frequent, and uh, it is with a white spore print. There's a spore print. The stipe is colored the same as the cap. It is cylindrical to bulbous. It is finely scaled or hairy, and it's got these kind of lighter colored scales, and you can see them there. Uh, I would say that's fibrillose as well, because it's not actually hairs. It's, it's kind of like thin scales. It has a central attachment to the cap, and it is has those same kind of stalk-like qualities that we've mentioned before, and these are up to three inches high. So these are mycorrhizal with hardwoods and preferential to oak. So if you got this on your bucket list and you really want to find it, the best place to look would be the southeastern portion of the province around the Manitoba border there. These are terrestrial, they're solitary to gregarious, and these are found spring and summer. The edibility is once again choice, has a mild taste, it's for intermediate mushroom pickers. We're going to take a look at a very loose look like here. Um, Lasaria amethystina, the amethyst deceiver, is on the left. As I'm sure you can tell, Cortinarius iodioids is on the right. Cortinarius iodioids shares a similar color, but everything else is different. Uh, Cortinarius iodioids is also covered in a thick layer of slime. So um, I'm putting it up there just for the sake of doing so because of that color, but um, it should be pretty easy to tell them apart if you look into it, which you should. So the purple guild Lasaria is next. Uh, it's not generally called a deceiver because this one shares some very different, uh, has some very different attributes that the others don't share. And this is Lasaria ochropurpurea. Again, a very beautiful mushroom, great for the table. 
So this says lilac to purple in color, fading to light tan with age. And you can see a bit of that tanning starting to occur there as well. Uh, it is convex, flattening out with age, sometimes developing a little central depression uh, as it becomes upturned, sometimes a fairly deep depression. Uh, the margin is downturned when young, otherwise smooth, and of course becoming upturned. Uh, when you run your finger over the cap, it should be either smooth or with very fine scaling and it's hygrophonous. And you can see that hygrophonous attribute occurring there um, where you're starting to see two separate tones, one darker than the other. One of them, often, often with hygrophonous mushrooms, one of those tones as well will be almost translucent. And these grow up to five inches in diameter. So that's quite a bit bigger than we've seen so far. Here's a size reference for you. Once again, a very good mushroom for the table. Now I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you to look at the stipes uh, on the right hand side there and you'll see they're quite different. And that's, that's going to be something unique to this mushroom as well that we'll talk about in a bit. So the gills are dark purple. They are adnate to the current very close together and that's uh, a big difference from what we've seen thus far and that's something that makes this much easier to identify when compared to the other mushrooms in this genus. Uh, the gills are still quite thick. Uh, short gills are frequent but since they're so close together and pressed together they almost look forked. They're not. And then it has a white spore print. That stipe is the same lilac as the cap, and it bruises a reddish brown with age or, or with damage. And I'll show you that in a second here too. They have a variable shape. So I asked you to look at that stipe uh, prior when we were looking at the size reference photo. And you can see here, uh, you have a cylindrical stipe on the left, and then you have a clavate stipe on the right. And prior we had seen a fusiform stipe and they'll also be bulbous. So there's a lot of variability there. Whereas with the other species, we're really only seeing those long slender stipes with maybe a little bulb at the end. So these are fibrillose or with raised scales. So those scales that are raised up feel almost like hair when you rub your thumb across them. Uh, they have a central attachment to the cap and they are quite high. They, they can be up to six or seven inches, maybe up to an inch or two thick, especially with the huge fulciform one like this one here. That stipe is almost as wide as the cap. And you can see it's tapering on both ends. And then on the very far right, we see a bulbous stipe. So there you've seen all four types. And you also see where somebody looks like they've used a fingernail or something to damage uh, that stipe to demonstrate the bruising. It's got that reddish streak going down. So that's the bruising with damage. These are mycorrhizal with conifers and hardwoods, but preferential to oak and pine. So that covers a good portion of the province. They are terrestrial, solitary to gregarious and found summer through fall. Their edibility is choice. These are good in any dish, and they are for intermediate mushroom pickers. Once again, that nod off to our uh, nod to Cortinarius iodioids on the right hand side. You should be able to tell them apart fairly easily as one of them is covered in slime. That would be the one you don't want to pick. Next species. This is the bicolor deceiver, Lasaria bicolor. So, get into it. Looks fairly similar to the first couple ones that we saw there. So the cap, again, has some variability. This is pink to salmon to pinkish brown. They're convex, flattening out with age, sometimes developing a central depression. The margin is downturned sometimes becoming uplifted, sometimes wavy. And again, it can have that kind of pleated look to it when it's, when it's very young. As you can see a bit there in the right hand side, these are sometimes smooth, sometimes velvety. Again, it's hygrophonous, like we've discussed before. These are up to 
three inches in diameter. I'm going to show you some of the variability here. So on the left hand side that's more of a brown, probably a very dry one. On the right hand side that one's flattened out there and it's uh, got a range of colors. And these can be salmon to pink to purple in terms of their gills. It's again a lot of variability. They are adnate to decurrent. They are distant. They have very thick gills and those short gills are becoming more frequent. You can see five there up at the top between two gills. And uh, it has a white spore print. You can see that deposit around the apex is demonstrating that. And again here, this is to demonstrate the variability of that gill color. Those are purple gills now instead of the pink that we were looking at. So the stipe is colored the same as the cap. Uh, it'll have that same variability, but it shouldn't deviate from what the cap is. It is cylindrical to bulbous. It is smooth to fibrillous and hairy, central attachment. It is stalk-like and flexible, tough and fibrous, very similar to, to the other smaller species we saw. Um, with this exception, it has purple tinted mycelium at the base. And that stipe again is up to five inches high, which you've seen. So you can see how much that purple mycelium stands out once you first picked it. If you notice it then, that's great. Otherwise, it will quickly become white and you'll have a hard time distinguishing this from the next mushroom we talk about. This one is mycorrhizal with conifers. So you can find that throughout most of Saskatchewan, actually, especially northern Saskatchewan. Terrestrial, solitary to gregarious, and these are found spring through fall. Choice is or the taste is choice. Uh, they are uh, for intermediate mushroom pickers. I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, and then these have a mild taste, but with a hint of radish. So it's almost like you were cooking a little bit of radish in with your mushrooms. So on the left here, we have Lasaria bicolor. On the right, we have Mycena pura. Mycena pura is mild to moderately toxic. It's also a bit smaller. Um, but it does fairly closely resemble uh, Lasaria bicolor. The main difference is those stipes are white, almost off-white to white. And I'll talk about Mycenapura when we get to the toxic species. So this is the one. This is the one that makes everything so confusing. This is the Deceiver Lasaria lacata. Okay, so this will explain everything. So the cap is red to orange to salmon to pink to purple to brown. You could throw gray in there too, forgot to add that. It is convex, flattening out with age, sometimes developing a central depression, other times keeping a central umbo. So basically it can take on pretty much any shape that we've seen up till now with this genus. The margin is downturned, sometimes becoming uplifted, sometimes wavy, sometimes striate, sometimes smooth, or any combination therein. Uh, when you run your finger across it, it'll sometimes be smooth, sometimes it'll have a velvet coating, other times it'll be finely scaled. It is hygrophonous, so you can take that long grocery list of colors and you can put any two into a two-toned version. And then it's up to three inches in diameter, though sometimes a bit larger, sometimes they'll be really small. Here's some variation for you. Here's some more variation for you. Here's a size reference for you, and again, another variance. You can see a two-toned version here. So the gills are salmon to pink to tan to purple. Adnate to decurrent, they are distant. They're very thick gills. Short gills are frequent. I picked a photo here um, that I found that has an insane amount of short gills present, not present frequent, frequently there, and then has a white spore print. There's another photo of the gills that is completely different than what you just saw. Here's a spore print. 
that won't help you though not to determine between species here the stipe is colored the same as the cap so again that's pretty much any color cylindrical to bulbous smooth to fibrillose and hairy central attachment it is stock like and flexible tough and fibrous here's the difference it has white mycelium and that will differentiate it from the one we just saw the bicolored deceiver and then these are up to five inches high the ecology will not help you to differentiate this mushroom from the others because this is mycorrhizal with hardwoods and conifers so basically any tree they will be found anywhere the other ones are found it is terrestrial solitary to gregarious and then it's found uh, from spring all the way through to fall so the seasons won't help you either truly is the deceiver. Its edibility is choice, has a mild taste with a hint of radish, and it is for intermediate mushroom pickers. So basically what I'm showing you is a group of mushrooms that are very easy to determine that they're in the Lasaria genus. They have a lot of shared qualities and this isn't a mushroom that you see it's, it's not what you think of when you see mushrooms and you think of mushrooms. But to determine the species, that's going to be a difficult one to do. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Uh, this is the Mushroom Wizard, and I will see you again with another presentation soon.